welcome dear students today we shall begin with the new chapter that is composition of matter chapter number 6 part 1 so let's begin before that we'll answer a few questions what are the various states of matter we have already learned this in the previous standards the various states of matter are solid liquid and gaseous state what is the difference in ice water and steam ice water and steam are in different states that is solid liquid and gaseous what are the smallest particle of matter called i have already explained you all this students the smallest particle of matter are called atoms what are the types of matter the types of matter are elements compounds and mixture now let's do an activity take some mustard seeds in a transparent plastic jar thread a long thread at the center of a big balloon by means of a needle and tie it tight stretch this rubber diaphragm and fix it on the mouth of the jar by means of a rubber band pull the diaphragm up and down with the help of the thread first slowly then with moderate speed and then vigorously record your observations so now we have this table on page number 39 in our textbook in the first column we can see the mode of pulling the diaphragm up and down and the other side we can see movement of the mustard seed so when we pull it slowly the vibration happens in the same place when we pull the diaphragm with moderate force vibration happens in different places similarly when we pull the diaphragm vigorously which means with great speed vibration happens all over the jar on the above experiment we give energy less or more to the mustard seeds by pulling the diaphragm up and down making them move differently the particles in the solid liquid and gaseous states of matter have movement somewhat similar to that an intermolecular force of attraction acts between the particles of matter the extent of the particles particle movement is determined by the strength of this force the particle of solids are very close to each other and vibrate at their fixed position see from this diagram we can see that the particles of solids are very close to each other and vibrate at their fixed position due to this solids get properties like definite shape and volume and also high density and non compressibility density means compactness and non compressibility means cannot be reduced in size by pressure the strength of intermolecular force is moderate in the liquid state from the diagram you itself you all can see that the particles are a little far away from each other though it is not strong enough to fix the particles in definite position it is strong enough to hold them together as a result liquids have definite volume however they have fluidity and their shape is not definite but changes in according accordance with the container which means if we keep water in in a jar it occupies the shape of the jar and when we keep it in a bottle it occupies the shape of the bottle the intermolecular force is very weak in gases therefore the constituent particles of gases move freely and occupy all the available space from the diagram itself on the screen you all can see the particles are very far away from each other consequently gases have neither definite shape nor definite volume see this diagram is the interparticle distance uh, in the square box you all can see the particle distance now this is again one representation of the particles in solids liquid and gases in solids the particles are very close to each other in liquids they are little far from each other whereas in gases there are they are very very far from each other on page number 40 of your textbook we have this chart uh, it states the characteristics of states of 
matter so in the first column we have physical state of matter that is solid liquid and gases we'll go one by one for solid it is rigid plastic and elastic rigid means it cannot change its shape yes we have many examples of uh, solid uh, which do not change their shape volume definite yes they have definite volume solids have definite volume they have definite shape as well compressibility negligible which means in some cases they can compress in some cases it cannot intermolecular force is very strong again you all can refer to the diagram intermolecular force is very strong distance between the particle is minimum yes again look at the diagram and just see the distance between the particle is minimum for liquids fluid means they can flow ability to flow volume yes liquid have definite volume shape no liquid do not have a particular shape it occupies the shape of the container in which it is placed compressibility very small intermolecular force is moderate and distance between particles and liquids is also moderate again you all can refer to the diagram given above in gaseous state it is fluid volume is again indefinite gas do, uh, do, does not have any definite volume again gas do not have a definite shape compressibility very high intermolecular force is very very weak and distance between particle is very large you all can see from the diagram distance between the particles in gas is a lot this is the again we have one more table on the same page that is page number 40 here we have to write the chemical formula or composition and the type of matter. So the first one we have water. So chemical formula for water is H2O. Type of matter is compound. Next we have carbon. C. Type of matter. Element. Now compound means different types of atoms come together and form one particular material. So, in the first case, we see hydrogen and oxygen coming together. That is why it is compound. And elements, they are made from only one type of element, uh, atom. So, for carbon, we have only C. So, it is an element. Oxygen, we have O2. Again, an element. Air. Air is made up of hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide. So, it is a mixture. Similarly, remaining, you all have to do with students for aluminium, brass and carbon dioxide. So, which we saw just now is the second method of classification of matter. In this method, the criteria used for classification of matter is chemical composition of matter. We have seen in the previous standards that matter is classified into elements, compounds and mixture by considering whether the smallest particle of matter are similar or different and what are they made of all the smallest particles that is atoms or molecules in an element or a compound are alike however the smallest particles in a mixture are of two or more types the smallest particle of an element contains identical atoms for example each molecule of oxygen contains two oxygen atoms in bonded state. The smallest particle of a compound are formed by joining two or more types of atoms to each other. For example, each molecule of water contains two hydrogen atoms joined to one another with an atom of oxygen. The smallest particle of a mixture are atoms and molecules of two or more elements or compounds. For example, the main constituent of molecules of the mixture namely air are nitrogen, oxygen, H2O, CO2. Similarly, the mixture brass contains atoms of copper and zinc while bronze contains atoms of element copper and tin. On page number 41, we again have one more table here. Now, in this table, it is a schematic submicroscopic picture of the types of matter, namely elements, compounds, and mixture, and also the characteristics of them are written. So, we will do it one by one. The first one we have element, 
so under that we have nitrogen molecule we have oxygen molecules now if we see all the atoms are alike for nitrogen all are uh, bond to each other that is n and n coming together n2 and all are of the same uh, contains the same atom similarly they have shown for oxygen molecule also constituent substance of element is only one and it is that element itself all the atoms molecules of an element are alike all the atoms in a molecule of an element are alike and are joined to each other by chemical bonds see so all can again go back to the diagram uh, and have a look atoms molecules of different elements are different see so the atom for n2 is different atom for o2 is different so uh, the atoms of different elements are different now we'll come to compounds nitrogen dioxide molecule no2 now if we see the atoms they have changed the color that is we have blue and white color atoms two atoms of oxygen in blue color and one of nitrogen in white color they are bonded together similarly we have for nitric oxide molecules also no we one for nitrogen one for oxygen they are bonded together constituent substance of a compound is only one and it is that compound itself all the molecules of a compound are alike see all can again go back and see all the molecules of nitric oxide molecules are alike the constituent atom of a molecule of a compound are of two or more types and are joined to each other by chemical bond the proportion of constituent elements in a compound is constant see we just have to refer the picture given in the first and second column for each point or each character characteristic they have mentioned so the proportion is also the same the properties of a compound are different than those of the constituent elements yes third column we have mixture mixture of n2 and no2 now if we see the picture which they have made we can see the white two circles coming together bonded together those are n2 whereas we can see three circles coming together or bonded together those are no2 that is two mole two atoms of oxygen one atom of nitrogen so it is a mixture of n2 and no2 similarly we have one more example mixture of n2 and o2 see the white color ones we can assume it as n2 and the blue color circles bonded together we can assume it as o2 constituent substances of a mixture are two or more elements or compounds atoms or molecules of a mixture are of two or more types the constituent molecules of mixture are different from each other and are not joined by chemical bond see the molecules of nitrogen that is n2 or uh, the second example which i have mentioned n2 and o2 they are not chemically bond to each other they are separate the proportion of constituent substances in a substance in a mixture can change which means the proportion of n2 can be more than that of o2 so it can change in a mixture proportion of constituent substances are retained in the mixture retained means they gain all the properties in the mixture that's it for today students we will continue with the remaining lesson in the next video thank you